to you. My name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Today I'm going to talk to you about my first impressions of my Louis Vuitton Horizon 55 suitcase. Is it the ultimate luxury travel piece? So this video will be shot with me talking and I'll put in some b-roll with close-ups of the actual piece. If you didn't know already, I purchased my Louis Vuitton Horizon 55 in Paris at the Plus Vendome Boutique when I was on Meredith's private VIP appointment. I had had to cut into my original carry-on bag because the lock mechanism failed to work. I was in Paris, Meredith's sales associates were asking what we'd like to look at at the VIP appointment and nothing came to mind until I realized I needed to purchase a new roll-on carry-on, carrier board, carrier board, roller board, roller board luggage piece. And I thought, this is the perfect time. I'm in Paris. I'm going to Louis Vuitton. They're known for luggage. Like, you know, that's what I want. That's what I'm going to get. And I also wanted it because they come with a luggage tag and I wanted to hot stamp that luggage tag with my trip to Paris because it had been such a wonderful trip. So I knew that they'd have them in stock so I didn't bother asking for those to be reserved. I picked up the bag and I opened, I, I picked up the bag, I unboxed the bag in this video here so I will attach that video for you. And I used the bag to bring back all of my luxury purchases to Australia on my flight from Paris, Charles de Gaulle via Dubai to Brisbane. So basically I wheeled it through Charles de Gaulle airport. It went through security. Um, they went through it because I had perfume bottles in there that weren't in a plastic baggie, tut, tut, tut. Um, then I repacked it, then obviously I placed it in my overhead locker. I was traveling business class, so I guess it wasn't all jammed in because I had my own storage locker. Then I wheeled it through the Dubai airport, which is quite a trip to change terminals. And then it went again in an overhead locker to Brisbane. I've since used it on a couple of domestic trips. I've not used it on a car trip as yet, but it's been in and out of Ubers and taxis. I have not been careful with it. It has been with me the whole time. I have not had to check the bag, but I'm very careful about what I put in the bag and I'll explain that to you in just a moment. The bag does have wear and tear, even despite me being the main person who's handling the bag or the case. I've recently taken it to both Sydney and Melbourne and I feel like I've used it enough now to share with you how usable it is, what I use it for, what I pack in it, the pros, the cons, and whether I think it is the ultimate luxury travel piece. So let's get into it. So the first thing that I'll say in terms of usability is in Australia, where I live, wasn't so much of a concern when I was traveling internationally, but we have really strict luggage restrictions on weight. So even though your case might fit the dimensions that are outlined on the carry-on baggage requirements for your airline, most airlines cap out at seven kilos. Some cap out at seven kilos total, including your handbag. But the airline that I primarily travel with is seven kilos for your carry-on suitcase plus a personal item, which is a handbag. And for that personal item, I max it out with my Louis Vuitton GM Neverfull tote because I can put a little handbag inside of that. But there's no way I'm not going to take full advantage because this one isn't weighed on the airline that I travel most. But the carry-on can be weighed. Now... If the carry-on is of a weight that exceeds the seven kilos, you make it to the boarding gate and they check it, they will put a tag on it and put it in the hold. That's not something I really want happening with this bag. A for damage, B for potential theft, right? Although the other day I did see a Louis Vuitton keep all going around the conveyor belt at the airport and it did make me wonder if it was real or fake because I don't know too many people that would put their real key balls in the in the checked baggage so that's one thing the other thing is sometimes if the plane is full 
uh, they will look at luggage and they will put a tag on your case and say you can drop this as premium hand luggage which means it's not checked in that it's in with all the main luggage it's where small pieces that you know would fit the carry-on restriction but they don't have room for them in the plane they kind of place them in a separate part of the baggage hold again someone else is using them you pick them up at the at the footsteps of the plane so from that perspective i guess they're not going to be put onto a trolley car and then put on a carousel however yeah not ideal so for that reason i like to keep my bag under the seven kilos the first con about this bag i'm going to start with cons and then pros because i figure you want to know what the cons are right is the weight of it so the weight of the actual suitcase itself there are no specifications on the louis vuitton website for this so i have checked it with my scales so it's weighing in at 2.8 kilos now 2.8 kilos that's just 700 grams less than half of the total weight that I can take in this bag so I guess that is one con for me and what that tends to mean is that I don't use this bag to pack for clothes and cosmetics this is not the bag that I am living out of so to speak I use this to carry my luxury handbags so as a luxury lover I like to take more than one bag with me on holiday. When I went to Melbourne recently, I think I took four bags. So <laughs> what I like to do is have those with me. I don't like to put them in checked luggage. I like to keep my jewelry pieces with me. I keep my laptop and things like that. So I tend to use this suitcase for that purpose. I don't think I can pack light enough that this would only have four kilos of my personal goods in it and make it within that seven kilo limit. I just don't think that would work. If I was traveling overseas, however, traveling business, for example, I wouldn't have any concern with packing this bag to its capacity. Um, which I think, you know, you could probably get it up to 15 kilos really. Um, but yeah, that is one thing I'm going to say straight up is in Australia, domestic airlines, forget about um, using this as your overnight bag unless you are the most minimalist packer ever or you want to take the chance that they're not going to weigh it and you're happy for the bag to be put into the checked luggage and go into the hold of the plane. That's my first thing. Now, my second thing, and that's where I'm going to put some B-roll in to demonstrate to you. One thing that I love about the design of the Horizon is that the actual trolley part of it is on the outside of the bag so you don't have the typical part on the inside of the suitcase where the trolley kind of indents into the base and can damage if you're going to put some bags in there it can damage it so i do like that the height of the handle the trolley handle is great it has three different locking functions so you can adjust it to each height and the wheels there are four wheels and they kind of spin around effortlessly fantastic one of the challenges i have is when i put the neverfull on top of the bag there's nothing to hook it to so i have been informed that there are little hooks that you can purchase where you can hook your tote bag to the top of your luggage but I feel like that's a design flaw for this particular luggage piece the other thing is if you are holding it really tightly because it does have some weight in it and you're you know maneuvering it through the airport sometimes the um, the little notches that hold the handle up they can fail and it will slip down so you've got to hit the button and pull it back up again so that is something that I have noticed when I am carrying a bit of weight in my tote and my suitcase that it can tend to slip down but in terms of throwing in a quick pro right so in terms of a pro the look of the Louis Vuitton GM Neverfull sitting on top of the Horizon 55 chef's kiss it's just gorgeous and it just puts an extra skip in my step knowing i'm traveling whether for business or pleasure and having this beautiful look through the airport i really love it you might think that's a ridiculous wanky thing to say 
maybe it is for you but for me it's yeah I love so it now we're going to have a look at the wear and tear on the bag and I'm going to keep going through some of the cons so let me have a look over this now I noticed just then that there are some stickers on these upright pieces you can see that there is a sticker there and I'm just wondering if they're meant to be there if they're there for protection it looks like they're there for protection or if they're not meant to be there I mean one is peeling a little bit on the corner here so I'm thinking maybe it's not meant to be there I might have to take those off I'm going to show you um, around the bag in a close-up while I just sit here and talk but there are quite a few scuffs and marks across that hardware where the metal handle goes and as I said I've told you who's handled it and how many trips I've done there's some scuffs on the little rubber um, pieces on the back um, there is a big scuff on the canvas at the bottom um, where it's you know it's damaged it quite significantly and I don't think that Louis Vuitton can repair canvas and it's not a spot where I'd be likely to put a sticker in terms of the vachetta there are scratches and marks on the handle on the top and some imprints um, on the two top corner covers they're starting to patina really nicely and yeah they have a couple of little scratches and marks and the top handle absolutely has some um, scratches and marks but whilst that might be a con to some people I love it I got off the plane the other day and it started spitting rain and I thought oh this is my chance to get water spots on the bag I mean who thinks that I don't know but I was I was excited and then they didn't even really stay so I, I can't see any evidence of them now which is yeah, a bit disappointing. So I'll have to wait for another opportunity to get water spot marks on my machetta. <laughs> so the zipper is very smooth, but I think the bag has been designed back to front and I'll tell you why. First of all, there's only one zipper on the outside. Now I understand that so that it has a more efficient locking mechanism. However, that's just not the norm for a hard-sided case. Um, you want to be able to grab the zips, open it up quickly. This one, you literally have to zip all the way around. You can't do that kind of half zip thing. I know it doesn't sound like a big thing, but for convenience, it does affect the convenience. So um, to give you an idea of what actually can fit inside of the suitcase, when you open up the internal pocket and you don't zip it up, you just leave it flat, I can fit the full width of my GM Neverfull into the bag. And when you see this image here, you can see that the inside of the horizon is about the equivalent to a Neverfull. So interestingly, I could probably fit just as much in the Neverfull as I can in the horizon. But... I don't want to be carrying that around on my shoulder, do I? So what did I pack last week? Well, I think it's evident in my outfits. I took my Fendi baguette in the um, fuchsia color. I took my Fendi peekaboo in the violet. I took my Fox Fendi first. Obviously, I had the Neverfull as well. And I also took my new Gucci Sylvie leopard print bag. So I put them all in there along with my little jewellery case and yeah, no problems at all. So I feel that I've covered a few of the cons in terms of the wear and tear, the weight of it um, and how that affects what you pack in it, at least here in Australia. And you know, the kind of the handle that, um, oh, I've just noticed something. God, details, Dale. Wow. Okay, that's news to me. <laughs> Inside the handle where you put your hand, it's actually all vachetta. 
Whereas I thought that that was just metal, but I literally was just looking at it sitting there and I'm like, that's actually leather. So there's actually a little bit more wear there because I've not even considered that that would be leather. Oh, that is definitely going to wear with your finger oils from your hands and what have you. I didn't even notice. Probably a good thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, th there's a few cons and I bought mine on holiday. So I did get the VAT back. Um, I did buy it new. Could you pick one of these up pre-loved? Look, it would probably be my recommendation if you don't want the whole experience and you're not sentimental and those sorts of things. Um, you could pick one up pre-loved for a pretty good price, I would suggest. But why do I love it? What are the pros for me? Well, firstly, just the look of it. And I think that's evident um, when I do my outfit of the day, when I unboxed it, um, it really does put a skip in my step. And that is something that when you're traveling, whether it be for work or play, luggage is a really fun and essential part of it. So, um, yeah, I, that's definitely a pro for me. The fact that I bought it in Paris at Plus Vendome after a fabulous, fabulous day, uh, that I got those hot stamps, which I'll show you. And these luggage tags were gifted, as you saw earlier, the luggage tag that comes with it is still blank. But these are the two printed luggage tags that were gifted along with the suitcase. Um, the wheels, the functionality are pros. I love that. I love how it glides through the airport and everywhere. I think that you do need to make sure you've at least got some weight in it because if it's very light, if I've only packed a couple of things in my hand luggage um, because I'm planning, you say, to purchase some things at my destination, it can be a little um, fly away, like it doesn't have enough um, weight in the base of it. So yeah, I guess I've gone back to a con, but I think that's the same for all suitcases. What are the pros? This is going to be a piece that I have with me forever and a day. And in actual fact, I've got to start going through all of this these bits and pieces that I've kept over the years. I've got stickers and things that I actually want to put on this and see how it goes on the canvas finish. See if they will adhere and what they look like. So if I do put some stickers on, um, I will update this video and um, yeah, I'll, I'll show you those. I did ask at Louis Vuitton Melbourne if they did do painting on the Horizon 55s and they said no, strictly only the hard-sided luggage, so trunks and petite bois chapeau and those sorts of things. Um, petite mal maybe. Um, it's a bit hard to paint those because there's not a lot of surface area, but yeah, so I did ask about that one. You can order these personalized in the Mon Monogram. Um, I'll put a picture of that up over here. I think the purchase experience for me was a big part of it. I think you can also do these in the World Tour as well. I think for a lot of people, they probably wouldn't be as confident to personalize one, not knowing whether or not it's going to work for them. What design improvements would I give to Louis Vuitton to make this something that um, would make sense from a functional perspective well they need to add two zips because this one zip is just a bit clumsy and it's weird that the hand carry is on the back of the bag normally it's on the front of the bag where you open the bag up where the zip is so it's a little bit clumsy from that perspective but otherwise I really love it I think some kind of hook mechanism to make sure that you can hang a tote or a backpack or something given the width of the the trolley handle would also be a great improvement i recommend uh if you're crazy like me and you buy a lot of inconvenient impractical but beautiful luxury pieces absolutely if you're not so crazy but you still love the idea of it definitely consider buying it pre-loved if you're not crazy at all and you think it's a ridiculous waste of time obviously it's not for you and you'll be that judgy person at the airport thinking about how ridiculous it is to spend that amount of money on an impractical piece of luggage but I use this bag to carry all my other bags around and in my opinion that makes it absolutely worth it I'm yet to do a road trip with this case I think if I did a road trip where weight wasn't a restriction for the piece 
then absolutely I think it would be a lot more functional and I'd obviously like to add my niece BB to the mix and you know do the full set maybe Mr Addiction and I should do a road trip just so I can do that <laughs> I thank you very much for your time in watching it. I hope it's been helpful and covered some things or questions that perhaps that you might have had about this piece and whether or not it's right for you. Definitely consider buying in Europe where you can get your VAT refund and the recommended retail price is cheaper anyway. For us Australians, you know, buying at home, if you've got the money, do it. But it really doesn't make sense to me to buy things like this at home. But you do you i hope you found this helpful i have enjoyed going over it and discovering new things like stickers on the back and this leather piece here i had no idea about <laughs> um give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already i usually put out videos on wednesdays and sundays so i hope to catch you in my next one until then ciao